Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Allie, she, her, and I'm going to talk about scaling product insights, focusing on two initiatives, only you and Wrapped. So first, a little bit about me. I'm a product insights manager at Spotify based in Brooklyn, New York, and I've been at Spotify for the last three and a half years. And for two of those years, I've had the opportunity to work on Wrapped and other delightful moments. And today I'm going to be talking about how product insights contributed to delightful moments like Wrapped and Only You. Specifically, how we scaled our approach each year and partnered with cross-functional stakeholders. And two, I'm gonna also talk about uh, 2021 Wrapped post-launch insights as a case study to showcase how multiple data streams came together, specifically a DScout diary study, product analytics, and a survey. And my hope for today is to inspire you to tell stories with multiple data streams and to start small and scale your approach. But before I get into it, um, I wanna share a quick example of how multiple data streams could come together. So for all of you viewers out there, I want you to think about if you've screenshotted or saw somebody else screenshot and share their wrapped. Personally, this is one of my favorite moments of working on Wrapped. I love seeing it come to life and seeing people enjoy and connect with each other using their Wrapped results. And also as a researcher on Wrapped, it's a really interesting and kind of tricky behavior to understand. And it's really difficult to grok without insights from multiple data sources. Beyond my personal experience and as an insights practitioner, to understand this behavior holistically, we needed to look across three data sources, product analytics, a diary study, and a survey. Just looking at one of them would have yielded incomplete data. And just to level set, um, I want to get into some background on Only You and Wrapped. So the goals of these experiences, like Only You and Wrapped, are for Spotify to celebrate its listeners and to reflect on the larger role audio plays in their lives. Starting with Only You. Only You was a summer campaign that focused on the individuality of our listeners and the unique way that people listen on Spotify. We did this by showing them data-driven creatives like who else would play Lil Nas X followed by Phoebe Bridgers or how you've traveled in time through music from 2014 to 1956 back to 2020. And now on to Wrapped. Wrapped is our hallmark end of year campaign that shows listeners their year in review through their listening. And 2021 was our seventh Wrapped. And we wanted to differentiate it from previous years. And we included some new additions. So in addition to your top artists and songs and podcasts, 2021 introduced several new features, including your listening as a movie, um, your audio aura, which showed how your listening was wistful or bold or confident, and also 2021 Wrapped Blend. So how did product insights fit into these moments of celebration? Um, just to take a step back, I wanna talk a little bit about product insights at Spotify. So a typical product insights team at Spotify contains people who in most cases fall into one of two disciplinary families, user researchers and data scientists. And because of this close structure, we are constantly partnering on our learning plans and on our insights reports. And only you and Wrapped were no exception. Data science and research were close partners in developing insights goals, our approach, conducting analysis, crafting, and socializing insights, and also our recommendations. We're also embedded on product teams, so we can work alongside our traditional stakeholders of engineering, product, and design. But what makes Wrapped and Only You a little different is that it involves more than just the traditional R&D stakeholders on product design and engineering. Wrapped and Only You require a Herculean effort across many functions across Spotify, to name a few, brand and creative and marketing. And we wanted our learning plan to reflect this cross-disciplinary effort by bringing all of our stakeholders along for the ride and make them key partners in developing our, our learning goals. This partnership was a relatively new way of working and it didn't happen overnight. It started small with 2019 Wrapped and it grew each year, similar to our insights approach. And in this presentation, 
I'm going to take you through how our insights approach evolved and how product insights eventually started to partner with all stakeholders from the inception of projects to address their burning questions, inform decisions, and also to inspire future opportunities. So how did we begin? To show how our insights approach evolved, I'm going to use the what, why framework, which you can see here. We adapted this framework from a Nielsen Norman group article, and I'm also referencing a Spotify insights post by Colette and Christy. So this framework highlights some methodologies in each quadrant. This is not fully comprehensive, but in this framework, I want to focus on the X axis and the Y axis. Behavioral and attitudinal data is on the Y axis and what quantitative data and why qualitative data is on the X axis. And as you can see from this framework, there are many, many different ways we can implement complementary insights approaches to gather insights. So thinking about 2019 wrapped, 2019 was the first year that we had an on-platform implementation for wrapped and we focused on a singular learning goal understand how listeners perceive the experience. And though we had a single learning goal, we still prioritized a mixed methods approach, a survey from research and product analytics with data science. This enabled us to understand what was happening by unpacking both behavioral and attitudinal data, the what, and beginning to understand the why. And by combining research and data science, we could provide complementary insights, gain a holistic understanding of the experience, and mitigate blind spots of a single research method. Because the 2019 work demonstrated the value of product insights to our cross-functional partners, in 2020, we were able to expand our approach to new parts of the product development process from just understanding what had had happened to informing what could happen. As a result, we created a new learning goal for 2020 wrapped. In addition to understanding, we had the new learning goal of identify opportunities for future moments of celebration and on-platform experiences. We addressed this learning goal through a foundational study using user interviews. This enabled us to inform future opportunities for RAPT and beyond. Six months later, we had a totally new campaign, Only You. Because of our trusted relationships with partners, we became more involved than ever, and we got involved even earlier and more meaningfully to meet our newer learning goal, inform product and design development. This called for pre-launch research such as usability and concept testing. For the research goal of understanding how listeners perceive the experience, we also noticed a gap in our attitudinal insights. So we introduced two new methods to our toolbox a diary study and in-depth interviews to understand how these campaigns fit into people's lives and how they learn about them once we launch. To, art, to start to understand via diary study, we just launched in one market to pilot our approach. Through Only You, we showed how contextual data on DScout and capturing that moment of awareness was a really powerful insight. So we did it again for Wrapped in 2021. And this time we wanted to glean insights from four markets to gain a global perspective and understand any key differences. So now we're going to zoom in on three data sources that we leverage for 2021 wrap post launch insights. And I want to showcase how they all came together to tell a holistic insights narrative and what each data source uniquely offered to our insight story. To gather post-launch learnings, we had three key data sources, product analytics, a survey, and a diary study. The overall learning goals were to understand how listeners perceived the experience and to also identify future opportunities. These were the three methods we selected because they offered complementary data, qual, quant, attitudinal, and behavioral. And these were data sources that we launched simultaneously. And this was our largest data collection yet. Though I'm focusing on the post-launch data streams, our insights report also leveraged previous research from 2020 wrapped and previous years, only you and various other insights reports across Spotify. 
to answer our key research questions. To start off, we leveraged product analytics. And product analytics allowed us to understand what was happening on the Spotify platform. As an aggregate, we focused on who was engaging with the experience, how they engaged with it, what they did on platform, and also who wasn't engaging with it. And in sum, this gave us quantitative behavioral understanding of Wrapped. But what it lacked was the why. Which brings us to the diary study. So now I'm going to dive into the diary study on DScout, which provided the qualitative data or the why. And it also provided some behavioral and attitudinal data. So because we demonstrated the value of the diary study method on only you learnings, we scaled our approach to include three more markets, bringing us to a four market diary study. A few days before Wrapped came out, we launched this diary study on DScout to observe how listeners are made aware of the experience and how and why they engage with it. We started by getting a baseline of their experience on Spotify and their perception of the app. The questions we used to understand this were open ends about their favorite and least favorite things, video expressing how Spotify fits into their lives, and open ends about Spotify perception. We also wanted to observe how they are made aware of Wrapped. And to understand this, we asked them to check in and diary if they noticed anything out of the ordinary and then to share what that thing was. Some questions we used here to get at this were close ends about what they did in the app and then ask them to screenshot a photo um, of an interesting experience they had on the app. Once they indicated that they had engaged with Wrapped, we opened up the part of the diary study with specific follow-up questions to contextually capture how they found out about Wrapped and their reactions. To do this, we had close ends about how they found out about Wrapped, and we asked them to record themselves going through the experience, asking them to speak aloud. And through this video, we were able to gather really rich qualitative data about their emotion and sentiment when going through the experience. We also wanted to deep dive into their experience and capture more nuanced insights about their perception and also some capture some off-platform behaviors. And we did this through close ends and open ends about their off-platform behaviors, close ends, screenshots, and open ends to capture their sentiment, and close ends and open ends about their hopes for the future. This helped us add even more nuance to our understanding and also to identify future opportunities. As the last data source, we distributed a survey across nine markets two weeks after launch. This allowed us to further understand why certain listeners behaved the way they did, understand the perception of wrapped, and identify key market differences at scale. We also used the survey to help us understand why people do not engage with wrapped. So in sum, the survey provided quantitative and attitudinal data at scale. So post-launch, we had a lot of data to work with, and each of these sources offered invaluable parts of the insights narrative and answering our key questions. Through these data streams, we were able to glean quantitative, qualitative, behavioral, and attitudinal data, representing nearly every quadrant of the what-why framework and a key piece of the insights puzzle. To analyze this data, our approach was simple ensure we stayed focused on the key questions. Instead of thinking of these data streams as totally separate studies, we instead focused on the larger research question, the wisdom we hope to glean, and the impact we hope to have. We also partnered really closely with folks across Insights and our stakeholders to ensure we stayed focused on answering the questions that mattered most. So to wrap up, I want to share some of my key learnings when working with multiple data streams. The first learning is to ground your analysis in key questions and your desired impact. If you're working with a lot of data and you get overwhelmed, just look back at your key questions and think about the influence you hope to have. This will help you have a bird's eye view of the data, sift through what matters most, and remain focused on the desired impact of your work. The second learning is to expand who can ask research questions and to partner with your stakeholders early. Products can have many stakeholders, 
and look beyond the traditional ones and bring them on as early and often. This will allow you to unlock influence beyond understanding how something performed in the past and to inform future direction. Also, when working on projects with many different teams that don't usually work together, Insights has a unique opportunity to create alignment through a shared goal, the end user and their needs. The third learning is to leverage the what, fry, the what why framework to prioritize data streams. First, focus on answering the right question and then explore selecting the method second. The what why framework is a powerful tool for this selection process. Find complementary methods in different quadrants to counterbalance the strengths and the weaknesses of each. These can either be simultaneous studies or sequenced. Also, do not forget to look at previous research that's been done at your company. And then fourth and finally, start small. Begin with one or two complementary data sources. See what value they provide, where the gaps are, and build from there. Thank you all. Um, I hope this inspires you to use multiple data streams when working with DScout, and please be in touch. Mm -hmm.